Hello, welcome to part two of supply chain management. If you didn't see part one, I suggest you go and look at that video. Otherwise, you miss the first half of the content. So here we are. We covered uh, what is required out of the textbook. Uh, certainly, eleven point six. You don't need to worry about. And we left off at the start of the section on collaboration. Collaboration is how supply chain members cooperate with each other. And there are a lot of different players in collaboration. There's sales and marketing, uh, the supply chain management people, operations people, finance, information systems. And then there's the external members, uh, manufacturers, transportation, warehousing, retail, and somewhat customers probably not as much with customers other than getting some feedback from customers but typically customers the end users aren't part of the supply chain planning process so what happens with collaboration or what doesn't happen um, first of all there are what's called silos in an organization so if we go back to these internal members there's sales and marketing, uh, supply chain management, operations, and all of those different organizations have different priorities within the organization. Uh, for example, sales and marketing want to maximize the sales. They, they want to sell anything and everything just to get more sales, especially if they're compensated by commission. Operations, on the other hand, want to have high volumes of efficient to build products and some products that are difficult to build or inefficient they're not really interested in those <clears throat> and of course information systems people they're they're concerned with their computer systems and that those different priorities can cause problems because for example the information systems people they don't want other companies to have access to their systems and mess around with their data so they would rather not be sharing information because when you share information you have the risk of getting viruses or losing information or information can be taken and used for uh, competitive purposes so there are lots of uh, barriers to collaboration the other thing is that supply chain members sometimes will be cooperative and in the next situation they'll be competitors so they're not always uh, wanting to share all the information that might be necessary to coordinate a supply chain uh, there's lots of breakdowns so there organizational silos that's the different departments within an organization that often don't cooperate very well together. And goals and visibility, metrics, these are all things that influence the supply chain collaboration. The next section is on managing the supply chain. And just with, as with collaboration, there's uh, local optimization that might cause problems. So local optimization, that's where uh, one organization or one group wants to make their part of, of life, their part of the business, as efficient as they can so that they can maximize their, their profitability, their efficiency. And sometimes that's at the, the risk of other organizations because one organization might try to be more efficient and another organization might suffer because of that. And there are lots of opportunities within the supply chain and you can read about all of these in the textbook. The one interesting one here is vendor managed inventory. And that's something that Walmart became famous for at Walmart, the vendors actually manage their inventory. 
So for example, when you buy a Coke at Walmart, the computer systems send a signal directly to Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola knows that a product has been purchased and they put that into their planning for their own production and Coca-Cola decides when uh, replenishment should occur, when shipments should be made to Walmart. So Walmart doesn't order uh, a case or, or a truckload of Coke. Coca-Cola knows that the purchase has been made and they figure out when they should ship things to the Walmarts. So it's kind of interesting that the vendors take responsibility for for all of their inventory. If they send too much inventory, it gets sent back to the vendor and it's on the vendor's uh, responsibility to deal with that. So it's kind of interesting, uh, fast response. So another interesting one is called CPFR, Collaborative Planning, Forecasting and Replenishment. All that means is that unlike vendor managed inventory where the vendor looks after everything, <coughs> with collaborative planning, forecasting and replenishment, the different partners in the supply chain will work together to decide when it's best to, to send shipments of new inventory. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of uh, vendor managed inventory. Okay, the next section is on logistics. And a lot of people confuse the two terms, logistics and supply chain management. They're closely related, but as you remember from the definition for supply chain management, and I'll just flip back up to our definition, so supply chain management is managing the three things, products moving, money moving, and information moving in both directions. Logistics is really only concerned with the movement of products. So of course logistics company get, get paid and there's information moving, but that portion of it is really focused on the flow of products or the movement of products. go back down to logistics. So here's a short definition. Logistics is obtaining, producing, and distributing materials and products. And supply chain management is that plus forecasting, collaborating, coordinating. So, and I should have had in here uh, managing the money, the movement of money. And here's a kind of graphical representation of it. Logistics is involved throughout the supply chain, beginning with raw materials, uh, through manufacturing, and all the way to retail consumption. And primarily it's concerned with outbound logistics, but there's also reverse logistics. So when you order something from Amazon, for example, and you decide you don't want it, then you have to request a return and they send you a shipping label and they take that product back and somehow they have to put that back into their inventory, back into their system. And it's a bit of a challenge for some organizations because they plan how many of each product they think they're going to sell and then they plan replenishment. But in the meantime, if you go and purchase a large volume of some product, keep it for a period of time and then return it, then it can be disruptive to their planning process because they ordered new product to replace the one that you bought, but then you return that one and now they have two or more of, of the same product. So it's a little bit difficult. It's a complex thing, reverse logistics. Shipping systems. There's a lot of shipping systems involved in logistics. Of course, trucking, railroads, air freight, and waterways. And really, waterways is the important one. And that's because large container ships are so efficient, it's actually cheaper for product to be shipped 
for example, from China to Los Angeles, it costs less to make that leg of the journey than it does from Los Angeles to Phoenix. Waterways has become a very important part of supply chain management because it's so efficient to ship product by water. It doesn't really matter that factories in Taiwan and China and, and other low-cost centers are very far from the consumers because it's just so economical to make that ship. And of course there's pipelines and multimodal just means that uh, product is shipped on different modes. So most uh, Walmart product, for example, that's sold in Phoenix. Most of that product will come harbors in China by ship in their internal waterways or by truck. Then it goes by ship to Los Angeles and then it goes maybe by truck downtown LA area. Then it goes by train from LA to Phoenix and then it goes by truck again from the uh, rail yard to the stores. So most products are involved with multimodal shipments. And of course, obviously faster is generally more expensive. If you airship something, it's expensive. If you send it on ship, it's generally cheaper. Okay, the last one that we want to talk about is measuring supply chain performance. And there are a lot of different measures that we can consider. We're only going to worry about inventory turnover. That's probably the most common measurement of supply chain performance. So this is one that you want to read about this in the textbook and we're going to do some practice problems on it. And essentially the less inventory a company has the more efficient they are because they don't tie up their money in inventory. And the way to measure how much inventory a company has is to compare how much inventory they have to how much they sell in total. And that tells us the inventory turns per year. So we're going to work on some examples, but I'm not going to talk about them right now. You can read through this and read it in the textbook. I think that's all I want to talk about for supply chain management. Here's a summary on the different things in the two lectures. Read about it in the textbook and we'll work on some problems together. Thanks.